you decided to keep rates unchanged and not expand stimulus, um, yet you describe uh, some big uh, political risks uh, abroad. Uh, could you please describe those risks um, a bit further? Well, first of all, if you look at our projections, uh, our projections have hardly changed from our conversation in December. So the projections are the same, but while at the same time we have a very lively political conversation going on in the U.S. about trade policy, a whole bunch of other things. In Europe, we have a number of very important elections coming up. And that taken all together uh, is a risk in the sense that it's hard to put numbers on these issues today. Uh, but in a bad scenario, it could, have, it could affect uh, the world economy in a negative way. In a small open economy, that would certainly affect us. And then most likely, eventually, one way or the other, also affect monetary policy. But at this juncture, it was uh, best to st uh, just stay put uh, and uh, remember people of, of these things going on. Uh, if we focus on the state, uh, the states and the U.S., uh, what what what's the big worry there? You mentioned Donald Trump during the press conference. Well, I mean, one issue for us is, of course, if there are major changes when it comes to global trade and global trade uh, policies, because uh, given the openness of our economy, that would certainly, one way or the other, affect affect us. It's too early. It's it's too early to tell, and this is what makes this uh, so hard, because the. The dial, so to speak, is pointing in many different directions presently, and that's what, why we have raised these issues. But it's too early to tell what it will mean, but in, there are, it's certainly fully possible to come up with scenarios that are not so good for us. How worried are you about uh, Trump and possible protectionism? It's, it's a bit too early to tell. I mean, there's certainly a lively debate. We'll, time will tell what, what will be done and what eventually will be done. Some of the things can... Uh, can be done uh, uh, by the administration itself, but other things will have to be handled by, by the whole political system in the, in, in, in the U.S. Uh, history tells us that sometimes the noise level is higher than what actually gets done because that's how the system is built, but uh, time will tell. You cut your inflation forecasts a bit today. Uh, what was the main reason for that? Did that have anything to do with the political risks? Uh, no, that wasn't the political risk. That was kind of the general judgments that we uh, that we made in terms of what has happened towards the end of last uh, last year. How long it will take uh, for inflation to get up to to two percent, and also there has been a debate about uh, let's say the December numbers and the December numbers were were a bit on the high side due to energy prices and electricity prices in this. Uh, in this country and we expect that to be a temporary and for that reason we sort of expect inflation for the coming months to move uh, sideways before it slowly starts moving up towards two percent again in the course of 2018. But what was the main reason for changing the inflation forecast? Uh, well we changed the forecast but it's, it's we're really really talking about tiny changes and keeping track of sort of technical issues and issues like uh, issues like that. So there's nothing, nothing major in that because if you actually look at the numbers and if you read the tables then, then you see that it's not very, it's not very much. Um, and all, another thing that you did was you kept the repo rate forecast unchanged uh, despite uh, describing a, a fairly up, upbeat picture of, of the, the economy abroad and in Sweden. Um, why not reduce uh, the likelihood of a rate cut uh, further ahead? No, because in our view, there is enough uncertainty out there in order to, and, and, and that uncertainty led us to the conclusion that it's better to be, to be on the safe side, and we just could not find uh, uh, reasons good enough to change the policy path compared to uh, the path that we had in December. Some have speculated that, that the reason you didn't change the path was that you were afraid that a change could uh, strengthen the corona. What's your response to that? Well, generally speaking, we made a projection for the corona, and it's important for us that the corona does not strengthen too rapidly because that would hurt us when it comes to getting the inflation rate, uh, inflation rate up. But I've said it many, many times, it's very, very difficult to make exchange rate projections. But clearly, when, when we have a policy rate at minus 0.5, that is something that matters in terms of the general level of interest rates in this country compared to many other parts, and, and most likely that also affects the exchange rate a bit. But is it important to sound dovish at this point in time, given what's happened to the krona since December, for example? Well, to sound dovish or not, these are the projections that we have made, and this is, uh, this is, uh, these are our best projections as of now in terms of what it would take and what it will take to get inflation up to, to uh, our target of 2%. And uh, 
since it has taken quite a number of years, the last time inflation was around 2% was back in 2010, it's important for us to get inflation up and it would be just to, to do things too soon and to change things now. How do you view the corona development since the last, your previous meeting in December? It's strengthened quite a bit. Well, it has strengthened a bit, but, but on the other hand, it hasn't strengthened all that much. So we're still within the range of the projections that we have made in the past, and we think that, that that's a good thing. But at the same time, as we say in this report, it's also important that, that it stays there. How high is your tolerance for further strengthening? Well, uh, that's, uh, that's, hard, that's hard to tell because that, of course, uh, re depends on what's going on in the future, what's going on in the world economy and in the Swedish economy and what happens to the exchange rate. So it's very, very difficult to sort of pin down a number saying that everything hinges on that particular number and then things would, uh, would happen. So we'll, we'll look at that in the future if things start moving around too much. Uh, why was it impo important to extend the FX mandate, the FX intervention mandate today? Because in an uncertain world, this has uh, served us uh, well. We still don't know for sure where, where, where things are heading when it comes to, let's say, normalization in the global economy and also normalization in the, in, in, in the Swedish economy. And uh, uh, then uh, we want it to be on the safe side. How high would you say that the hurdle is for more stimulus in general? You're talking about rate cuts, bond purchases. Well, I mean, that's very, very hard to tell. But, uh, I mean, we have gone through a period when it has been quite difficult to get inflation up to 2%. And just for the sake of the argument, suppose our projections were to be wrong so that the inflation is actually not going up at the pace uh, that we expect now. That would certainly be an issue uh, where we would have to take this whole thing very, very seriously and maybe reconsider a lot of people are speculating that you're running out of ammunition. What's your response to to those kind of speculations? No, I don't. I actually don't. I actually don't think so. Because uh, first of all, when it comes to the QE buying government debt, as far as I can judge, that has worked well, much better than many expected when when the whole project uh, started. Because if you look at short rates in this country, they have come down and they have come down substantially. I think that the QE, QE exercise has uh, helped uh, when it comes to pushing down the entire yield curve. And that has been uh, that has been helpful. And we have a number of times in the past say, said that in addition to the buying government debt, we can do various things uh, to expand our balance sheet. So, so by far, we are not at the end of the road, if, if, if need be. And uh, minus 0, 0.5 is in no, no way sacrosanct when it comes to going, uh, going negative. Because by now, uh, we and uh, many, many market participants have sort of mastered the technical issues around negative rates. So, so if need be, we could, uh, we could go down further. But that's not, not in our main scenario this time. Your fellow board member, Per Janssen, in December, um, said that he may eventually switch sides and basically decide not to expand stimulus more um, and basically allow inflation, uh, allow more time to reach inflation um, if, if he thinks that uh, policy would have adverse uh, effects on the Swedish economy, for example, household debt. Uh, do, you, do you think uh, along the same lines? Well, I have no reason to comment on that today. I just take note of the fact that we had a unanimous, unanimous board uh, this uh, this time and the rest of it in terms of the nuances you'll find in the minutes a couple of weeks a couple of weeks from now so that's uh, that's uh, that's a kind of a mute issue for now